Good day everyone and welcome to part 3 of the series on science, technology, and society. In chapter 1, part of our discussion was on scientific revolution, a time period where our focus was on the pursuit for truth by early scientists amidst overwhelming challenges of society. In the previous video, we discussed about human flourishing and we emphasized that this search for truth is inherently related to what is perceived to be good, the pinnacle of happiness for oneself, which later transcends to society. Now, as the body of knowledge progressed over time, it paved way for societies to have newer tools, newer innovations, newer inventions, in other words, new technologies. As such, in today's session, we will discuss technology as a way of revealing. Or in other words, what does technology reveal about society? Let's find out. To put our discussion in context, let's watch this video clip from the movie Patch Adams. How many fingers do you see? You crazy mo- Stop sneaking up on me like that. How many? Four. Four? Four? Mm, another idiot. In this video, we see Patch being asked a question by one of the patients he encountered. As simple as the question may seem, and as sure as we are in answering four, just like Patch, we can't help but wonder what the answer to the question is, since the patient became indignant or dissatisfied, saying four is wrong. Later in the film, it triggered Patch to ask this patient what the answer to the question is, no longer clinging to what he perceives to be true but to somehow learn the answer to this problem on the patient's perspective. A perspective which, in the words of the patient, to not focus on the problem, to look beyond the fingers, to see what no one else sees. This shall be the premise of our discussion today, to see technology not only for what it is, but also for what it had become, particularly to society. BCE and CE. Time periods which means before Common Era, BCE, and Common Era, CE. Here we see two circles representing these two time periods. BCE is similar to BC or the time period before Christ. CE, on the other hand, is similar to the Latin Anno Domini, or AD, which means in the year of the Lord, referring to the birth of Jesus Christ. Okay. So here we see that BCE is characterized by a society that is withstanding harsh winds through fur clothing, okay, the skin of animals, catching prey through sharpened stones and wedges, and surviving the cold nights through warm bonfires and cooked prey. What's different in this time period is also how they see women. Women are looked at on their reproductive capability or fertility. Thus, this figurine of a voluptuous fat woman who is more capable of delivering a child than their skinny counterparts. Basically, we could infer that human beings and societies before common era is concerned with survival. There was a focus on needs. On the other hand, if we look in the common era, it is characterized by a growing population. More number of people within a community means more demand for resources which lead to more hunting and more fishing. Competition on territory and food resources became a norm. As such, wars were waged, where the winner gets to conquer more territory and hence more resources. On a later period, trade became the norm, 
as people realized that although waging wars with other tribes can give them the resources their community needs in order to survive, peaceful negotiations can be an alternative where people of different tribes or communities could get hold of things not present in their towns by offering something of same value in theirs. This led to cross-cultural trade and cross-cultural interaction. Their perception of beauty also changed. Thus, we see people in the common era having a different objective than their BCE counterparts. Instead of survival, the society turned to wealth. The idea that those who have many shall live comfortably and live happier than those who do not have. It became an era of have and have nots. Focus is no longer only on needs, but also on wants. In a sense, in BCE, human flourishing is focused on survival, while in the common era, human flourishing was focused on wealth. Which led us to today, where technology has drastically changed the way we live. With the use of technology, lesser women and children die during birth unlike before. Technology has been able to prolong lives by enhancing living status and discovering remedies to various diseases. In addition, access to education has never been easier and has been provided to more individuals. Technology has also been used to increase productivity among countries, as indicated by an increase in a country's gross domestic product or GDP. In other words, in the common era, we perceive technology for its essence or purpose. A deterministic view of technology as an instrument. An instrument to lessen mortality rate, discover remedies, provide easy access to education, increase productivity, among others. Technology became a means to achieve human beings' goal. It became a means to an end. By using technology as an instrument, human beings have a clear idea of what to expect out of technology. An instrument for humans to create wealth, to have a good life, and as a consequence, human flourishing. While looking at technology for its essence or purpose is one way of perceiving technology, Martin Heidegger, a German philosopher, gives us another way to look at technology. But, he warns, just like technology is not only an instrument, we must not also fixate ourselves on this second perspective. So what is the other perspective? In a sense, it is like asking ourselves, apart from the purpose of technology, what is technology? If we return to the movie clip we have seen a while ago, apart from the four fingers presented in front of us, what is the other way to see the problem and answer it on that perspective? In today's session, we have looked at how innovations, inventions, tools created by human beings reveal something about himself and about the society in relation to a time period. In a sense, Martin Heidegger asserts that technology can be understood based on its being, which constitutes human activity. It revealed to us that before common era, aside from seeing fur clothing as a means to keep themselves warm, which in a way is looking at technology as an instrument, it reveals to us that on this time period, the society needs to survive the harsh weather conditions, which is a human activity, the survival. Now, during the common era, we observe that part of human activity is the emergence of dichotomies, basically introducing two parts of the same coin. Okay? In the common era, nature became renewable or non-renewable. Human beings were classified as productive or not productive. 
they were reduced to the amount of productivity they can render in a lifetime. It was not like this during BCE. Technology has unconcealed or revealed something about human society that was previously concealed or nakatago. It revealed a characteristic design or flaw in men in each time period. It allowed human beings to confront the unknown or the concealed and see how they would react, which would later become a technological revelation or unconcealment. Thus, this view is related to the phrase from concealment to unconcealment. Although we can view technology as a way of revealing human activity in a specific time period, again, this is only another way of viewing the world. We must not rely on this as a universal hammer where everything we see looks like a nail. If we immerse ourselves on this view, it could present the greatest danger. As human beings in the common era pursue the good life by investing on growth and development, new technologies were created. Each of these new technologies bring with them myriads of possibilities to unfold, both positive and negative. As a result, humans may lose track of things that matter, reducing their surroundings to their economic value. In connection to the previous video, we must not be blinded by the results brought about by technology, but also look at the evidences presented to us by nature itself to distance ourselves from the second perspective because in this view, we view nature as a resource to fuel development and growth. And as discussed previously, the rapid pace of technological growth allows no room for nature to recover and this growth may actually be fatal resulting in exploitation and irreversible damages. Okay. As a summary, technology has been part of human activity since the beginning of our species. It has aided us in survival and helped us outsmart our adversaries, provided us comfortable living, allowed us to explore the world, and assisted us in discovering more about ourselves and the truth. However, it also leads us to a paradox in which we are only able to see the world in the lenses of technological innovations. In our pursuit of growth, we had conveniently forgotten that technology only presents one approach of viewing the world. This forgetfulness leads us to evaluate objects as consumable or not, transcending to other human beings, determining their capacity to be productive. Our valuation of things became one-dimensional, geared towards the production of goods for more consumption, which we believe will lead us to the good life. This is only one conception of technology. As Heidegger also proposed, the technology is what humans do. Advancements in the field exposes us to previously unknown predicaments or problems effectively helping us to reveal our own natures and enforcing one perspective in finding the truth. Now that it is acknowledged, we can try and divert our search to other approaches, the other meaning of the good life. And that ends our discussion for this session. Again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you are not yet subscribed and ring the notification bell so that you will be updated on our latest uploads. And as always, I'll see you in the next one on our lesson on the good life.